Hey guys, thank you for coming today. We'll give it a few seconds. Sometimes there's a little space between when we hit stream and when it actually starts streaming. But thank you for joining us today for a little bit of anime methoding. We are definitely seeing a little more inventory. Oh, here we go. Um, so thank you guys for coming, doing a little enemy methoding today. And um, we are definitely seeing a little more inventory coming on. We've actually had about five, uh, five brought five new listings on this morning. So uh, you guys are going to have more options, more opportunity to buy stuff uh, with less competition because it is not 2021 anymore. So lots of opportunity out there. You just kind of have to dig it up and uh, find the right seller for the right price. So um, today we're going to work on a little enemy methoding. Thanks for joining us for your most important hour of the day, your lunch hour. Really important. Uh, I, you got to agonize about what you're going to do during your lunch hour, at least I do. And um, so I'm, I'm happy to be here with you guys. There is a beach bar right over there, but you guys are a lot cooler. So I'm happy to be here. And uh, Luke, do you want to take over from here? Yeah, welcome to the party. We're going to have some fun today. We've chosen two uh, houses at random uh, from the uh, MLS. From uh, we're, we're actually going to go straight to Realtor.com today just to make things a little bit easy in a couple of different markets. And we also have chosen at random uh, a couple of properties from our Facebook group, uh, Short-Term Rental Listing Advice, which is SDRListingAdvice.com. So if you have posted your listing in there recently, who knows, you might end up on today's uh, Facebook Live uh, my name's Luke. I teach the uh, classes at the short term shop. Uh, I've taught over 10,000 people how to be uh, super hosts. Uh, and it's been a, an amazing journey. And I'm grateful to be here on this uh, star studded panel today. Uh, uh, well, we got Chuck Kramer, who is a, uh, an expert in the business, been around for uh, quite some time and uh, also very well versed in the uh, uh, taxes, licenses, and permits aspect of short term rental, as well as owning many of his own. Uh, we got Jan Johnson. She is in Panama City Beach, Panama City area. She owns the longest running Airbnb in Panama City, and she's also the lead moderator of the Panama City Beach Airbnb uh, Facebook group. We got Tim from, uh, we, well, he's originally from Iowa. Of course, some of you will know him from uh, being a, 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 a multiple time co host on Short Term Rental Management, which is my podcast. Love to have you come check that out anytime. And, uh, Tim also owns many properties, including long term rentals, which is one of the Many reasons why I like him. He lives in East Tennessee, which we will be covering today. And Natalie, also in East Tennessee, uh, multiple short-term rental owner. Um, I should also mention that uh, Jan, uh, uh, Tim, and Natalie do sell houses with the short-term shop, uh, the shorttermshop.com, which, of course, Avery uh, is uh, the boss lady. And we are all very happy to be here and proud. Uh, I'm, I'm just grateful to be here. It's, it's an awesome Awesome experience. So I guess, guys, let's have a little banter up front, if you don't mind, about you know what the enemy method is. Uh, and again, I will take full credit. I did create it, uh, and what that means is, is I named it because it's been around for centuries. It's been around since the uh, human uh, could speak in, uh, language. Even you know they were out there comparing fires and uh, different types of uh, tools to kill their prey or whatever the case may be. Uh, Walmart does it to figure out how much to price their toothbrushes, you know, so uh, it just so happens that this thing we call the enemy method comes in very handy in short term because there, there are so many things that you can explore by doing this basically comparable uh, procedure where you go on Airbnb and Verbo and you see what the competition is doing. Um, it does apply to long term rentals as well, which is basically where I got it from. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, long uh, enemy method for me basically just going and looking at who's I'm looking for who's really crushing it. Sometimes that person's hard to find. So I will oftentimes find uh, who's not crushing it and figure out why they're not crushing it. Because quite frankly, there are way more people out there that are not crushing it. Uh, and so I want to know why they're not crushing it. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, and I'll turn it over to anybody else that wants to talk. I guess I'll pick on Tim if I have to, because we already uh, kind of discussed this yesterday. And uh, go ahead. No, really. I mean, you, you, you nail the tip of it there, but, uh, uh, it's really just being obsessive. If you're an obsessive person, this will come easy to you, but it's, it's digging into who, who's your competitors and, uh, learning everything about them. You know, if you're looking at buying a house or if you already have a house here or where anywhere, 
you know, it doesn't have to be a short term. It can be a long term, be anything. But if you're looking to buy a van, it's going out and seeing what's cool in the van world. You know, if you're buying a house, it's going out and seeing whatever your competitor is. You know, if you're buying a two bedroom house, you want to know what all the two bedroom houses around you that are successful are doing. You know, what amenities they have, what's it look like decor wise, you know, stuff like that. Pricing, you can you can dig into anything. I mean, and you can, like you said, you can uh, any method of toothbrush. So. Yeah, if you want to know what amenities to add, you do use the enemy method. You need a housekeeper, you use the enemy method. You want to learn how to price, you use the enemy method. It's all the same thing. You're looking to repeat the success that other people have already forged. Yep. And, uh, you know, it's really, it boils down to wanting to be better at your at your trade, at your craft. Um, and just, just going out there and seeing who's, who's better than you, always being humble, which is something I struggle with, <laughs> uh, and making sure that you're uh, rising above uh, the competition. So uh, I guess let's just dive into a property here. I, I, sh I pulled up uh, just randomly. I went to realtor.com and typed in a, a random short-term rental, uh, short-term shop uh, market. Um, and, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and start with that one, uh, uh, Jan that we were discussing earlier, just briefly, uh, this one on Kona way, um, uh, Jan, I guess, or, or Avery, um, uh, these two ladies are very well versed in this, uh, in this market. If you want to give a, I'll share my screen here make it easier on you Known uh, a property right across the street from this. Um, so, uh, as a matter of fact, we were talking about this, my house is right there. And this house is somewhere within this community here. So Jan, tell us a little bit about this, this area, uh, just from a, you know, 10,000 foot view. This is the villages of Crystal Beach and it is a super popular. It has a beautiful resort style pool. All of the houses here look super beachy and fun. Most of them are four five, six bedroom houses. And, um, they have a special little tram that will take you to the beach during the high rental season that the HOA pays for. And I love this little community and I try to sell houses here to everybody who wants to be in the Destin area. Um, I think they're great. They appreciate very well and people love them. It, it's a little gated community, but it doesn't feel like it's there to keep you out. It doesn't feel pretentious gated. It just feels safe gated. And so I like it a lot. What do you have to say about it, Avery? I love Villages of Crystal Beach. They have really the coolest community pool of any of the community pools. And maybe there might be a couple others on the entire Emerald Coast, but definitely uh, the coolest one in Destin. So uh, I think that's a major, uh, a major plus. If you don't have a, a private pool, the Villages of Crystal Beach pool really can't be beat. They do have a shuttle to the beach that's included in the HOA in the high season. So that's pretty nice. You don't have to worry about golf carts or anything like that unless you just want to. Uh, really, really cool little, little neighborhood. I love it. It feels kind of like beach summer camp. <laughs> it's got a little, a, a cool little vibe to it. And all the houses are really great. For some people, it's a destination to itself. That with well, a pool, it's got that big, massive pool. You can, you really don't even have to leave the community right there, but if you wanted to whole foods and uh, the movie theater are right across the street, basically. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And uh, beach access is, is very, you know, very easy here. It's one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. So uh, just trying to, or in the United States, States, certainly look at that beach i mean it's just such a random it's just a random real estate photographer picture and that's really what the beach looks like you know so uh, what do we have here we got a four bed three and a half bath at 1.1 .1. um uh, real estate agents on the call what are your thoughts uh, i guess if you uh, if you even have any interest in getting involved with the price there is it uh, pretty on par for what you're seeing or do we not want to touch that or in the smokies that's pretty um that's that's kind of what we're seeing but you know, I'm not familiar with the income ratio for Destin. Um, so I know what the numbers might look like on that in the Smokies, but um, not sure about Destin. I think it's a good square foot price. That's how I look. Cause I sell everything between Panama City Beach and Navarre. And so I think it's a good square foot price if you're looking across all the markets for a property of that size and in this good shape and with the amenities that it has. So, so far, no reason to be offended by this thing. In other words, what we're doing here is trying to decide if it's even worth enemy methoding, which we're going to do that anyway. But uh, it so sounds like so far, uh, this random property that's been on the market here for 32 days, which is worth noting, uh, no, no major red flags is what we're saying. Do we look at property? Uh, well, I, sometimes I'll look at the history to see, you know, what it sold for. Most of the time, that's uh, fairly worthless. But uh, let's go over to... Uh, 
uh, Airbnb and pull this thing up. Um, I don't think in. you can look at, I think when people look at the history, sometimes they freak out because things have appreciated and you know, you can't hate on people because they bought at a better time, but that's going to be you in two years from now, if you don't yeah. buy something soon, because two years from now, that house will have appreciated a lot. And you would have said, wow, I thought it was too much, or I thought it was expensive, or I thought it was overpriced. And now I should have bought it then I should have bought it yeah. two years ago. So. Yeah. Let me give you guys like a, a quick tip about real estate. 99% of the time, the seller is always going to have paid less than what they're asking you to pay period. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and um, but it, it, oh, sorry, Chuck, Chuck, go ahead. That wasn't me. No, oh. I said, I said, and you kind of want that. You want it, you want your appreciate, you want the appreciation to be happening. Mm -hmm. right. right. All right. I think I'm, I'm pretty narrowed down here to uh, somewhat close to, to the, the actual neighborhood. Is this it? Uh, Let's see, here's Luke Ave, and it's off of uh, Hutchison. This is the hard part of enemy methoding, finding the property. So we're doing this live, so bear with us. Um, that's a restaurant strip mall situation. So maybe yep, I'm too you're far up this at way. Best Buy. <laughs> Best there it is. Buy, there it know. is. Oh, mm -mm, past right it. There. To the left, to the left. There yeah. we go. There you go. Okay. <laughs> so if you've ever enemy methoded, you should be fairly impressed with how quickly I found that because it, it can take a really long time. Even if you have the street names right in front of you, um, it can be rather difficult. So um, I, this is the pool. Yes, ladies. I think this is the pool here. Yes. You can see the pictures on the left too. The, the first picture down. Yeah, that's the pool. Yeah. Which is a beautiful, large uh, pool. Large pool. And it's basically this entire, it's a little HOA here. Um, and as a matter of fact, this area doesn't have a lot of HOAs, uh, but this is one within it, which, which you know, for that, you, you get the big giant pool, which is cool. Um, I don't know exactly, we could, I mean, if we wanted to spend the time, we could narrow it down to exactly which one it is on here. That's gonna be, you know, something that, that's something to consider as you're shopping or uh, checking your neighbors to see what they have going on, you are going to want to know which one of these is you uh, or which one of these is the one you're buying. I think for the sake of time, maybe we will uh, not do that. Uh, remind me again, I think we're dealing with a four. Four, three and a half. Three and a half. Thank you. So let's see what we can find here. Now, the, I also, while we're enemy methoding, I want to point out that this 187, these numbers you see here can be quite deceptive. Tim, do you want to talk about that? Now, I will, one, one more thing before I turn it over. The base price on Airbnb, I, we think, we would really know a way to prove this, does uh, affect what you're seeing here as these kind of average rates. But if you're using any sort of pricing software, which almost everybody is these days, um, that overrides this number. So we're not even sure if this number matters or not, but uh, Tim, yeah, do you want to talk about yeah. Also, it's never apples to apples. Usually the, unless you put dates in a lot of times, you know, it'll have like one property be August 1st to the 4th and the other one will be July, you know, so it can be actual different dates that pop up unless you put dates in. So it uh, depends on what method you use, uh, you know, and they, a lot of those you're pulling up have different dates right now. So uh, that can, that can make a difference with the pricing. And oh, yeah. like you said, really, it doesn't matter until you open it up and really drill in and do an apples to apples comparison. Uh, that's, that's what you really got to do. Let me, I want to add something that I do that, and I, when I'm looking at properties for clients, I will go in and make a wish list specific to this community and heart all of these communities, uh, all of these houses and put them in that one particular wish list and call it villages of crystal beach or whatever. And then now I don't have to go back and find it again. I can just go to my wish list and find it. That's smart. Yeah. In other words, don't look at these numbers here and be like, okay, $187, I can't make money with this thing. You got to dig way deeper than that. And a lot of times these numbers, uh, Chuck, I feel like you have a lot to say about that. These numbers are fairly worthless or what, what, what are these numbers? Yeah, they're fairly worthless. It, 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 I, I, would, I wouldn't even call it a starting point because um, once you click on those and you start looking at the calendar or putting in dates, the prices are unlikely to be anywhere near that except, I mean, there's, it's a, that's such a hard thing to answer with Airbnb. <laughs> the same yeah. thing happens with Google and hotels. If you Google a uh, hotel in downtown St. Louis, it's going to pop up a bunch of prices that look, you know, awesome. And then you go to click on it. And it's a $200 more a night than what it says. <laughs> so. so I figured out something to do with this a couple of years ago, and I actually use it to help market my properties. So I can't tell you that this is hundred percent true, but 
Um, what I'll do is what I have come to find with those numbers and the dots is what it's going to show you is the lowest nightly rate over the course of 30 days. And so what I do is in a 30 day window, I will throw a random Tuesday at like 150 a night. And that's what shows up on my bubble when people are searching by the map. And that draws you in at that 150 a night draws you in. And then my rates all around that 150 are like, you know, 250, 300. So definitely don't look at that bubble because those of us who are attentive to managing, we're using pricing strategies that are going to make that bubble seem lower. So if you look at mine and you see that my number is lower than my neighbors, that's just because I'm marketing it better. That's it. I'm trying to bring them to me. Why is this one cheaper? Fall in love with my pictures. Then anyway, so that's my thoughts on that. Very good. Wonderful. Natalie. I like that. Hmm. Beautiful. Love it. Now, if anybody was paying attention, I did narrow that down to four bed, three bath, uh, any number of beds. There is a big difference between bedrooms and beds. You can have a two bedroom with 15 beds, you know, so um, I, and, and I'm not saying this is the right way to do it. Um, this is just how I did it right now. And as you may have noticed, uh, I didn't really uh, weed it out too much. So it looks like we've got uh, quite a few four bedrooms in here. So let's uh, let's click around. I, I'd say this one is at least from the exterior. Uh, another another thing about this uh, neighborhood, uh, Jan, uh, they are very similar to these properties. Yes, is there maybe three or four different floor plans or something? Yeah, those, they go up to six bedrooms. So it just depends. Some are four, some are five, and some are six. And again, this, you know, we, <laughs> we did pick this property at random. I'm not joking about that, but we do have nothing but complete badass experts here at the short-term shop. And uh, we know our markets. So, you know, if you're shopping for a property, make sure you pick somebody who is a rock star in their market. Um, let's uh, take a look at his pictures here. They seem to be for, uh, fairly decent, not not a lot of pictures. Chuck, this is where you start to shine with the picking of folks apart and uh, feel free to chime in. <laughs> I feel like you probably already looked at, you already looked at this while I was chatting earlier. <laughs> uh, yeah, I kind of did. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. Uh, what do you want me to do? Uh, Just keep scrolling. I'll let you yeah. kind of yeah, yak it up here. Um, yeah. I mean, if you want me to pick it apart, like it was listed under listing advice, sure. Uh, it's like, where's the color? <laughs> it's, uh, I feel like I'm looking at this through sunglasses. Um, on the other hand, it's easy to clean. There's a little bit of color. Uh, but, you know, we're talking about selling house here. I mean, wait, are you in the Airbnb listing? Are you in the? Yeah, you are. Okay. Yeah, Airbnb. Um, Be honest, I'd score right past this thing. It, uh, um, it's a little boring. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if the owner is in the group, but uh, you know, I need something that pops. I mean, I'm at the beach for a good time. I, I, I'm here to be happy and all that. I'm, I'm not getting it from a lot of gray and brown and white. Yeah, but, but that is popular. And again, we're not here. I want to know too. Yeah. What I want to know a lot of times too is like what properties are doing well. So I actually go and look and see where their calendars are booked like excuse me and uh and you know try and get an idea of their pricing and the ones that are like crushing it and book the right amount out not and that doesn't mean the whole year's booked like the right amount out you know whatever whatever i deem that to be on that property and then i look at what's their property look like compared to the one i'm looking at you know because if i'm looking at a house i want to know like what am i gonna have to do to this house to crush it in this neighborhood you know and, and beat that guy so uh you know i'm kind of scrolling around you know looking at the worst and the best you know and uh to get an idea of like What's this property going to do that I'm looking at buying? Yeah, this, I'm enemy methoding while you're speaking here. This is exactly how I do it, you know, and, and not to be confused with listing advice, but it's interesting that Chuck was talking about, you know, listing advice because you will learn everything you need to know about how to make your house kick ass by enemy methoding, and they are very similar. So in other words, I, dare I say, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to go there, okay? Take it easy on me. If you are in the listing advice group, you have not been doing enough enemy method because you should have already proved all that stuff to yourself doing the enemy method but you know food for thought okay now here's something to take note of this is a self-manager they only have one property it looks like you know they probably own it they live in birmingham uh they're southern folks that love to go to destin and that is extremely common and then why wouldn't you it is just gorgeous um so uh for me, that is a positive in most cases i would prefer to be enemy methoding a self-manager that being said, um, I hate to tell you, uh, Brandon and Brandy, you, you know, there's some, this is a little left to be desired here. 
Uh, now the re reviews are great. I've got no problem with these reviews. Okay, a 4.89 for me personally is my sweet spot. That's where I think that rock stars live. I think that anything in the 4.5, 4.95 and higher is fake or too new. And I think that anybody 4.87 or lower is not trying hard enough. So bravo, Brandon and Brandy, you're doing a great job on your reviews. Uh, pictures kind of stink. And then guys, this is where it ends for me on the enemy methoding this house. Their calendar is not available. Uh, they've got some, uh, uh, well, I mean, it, I take that back. So we've got some September. I was thinking when I looked at this the first time that there was a lot of blockage going on here. Uh, it is possible that these are real dates. And if that is the case, uh, these people are probably priced a little too low and that's okay. Um, so my, I've, I've reversed my initial statement. I thought that there was a lot of blocks going on here. Chuck, Chuck, there is a possibility that these are real bookings, but don't you think, uh, uh, take a look at this October. How do we feel about this? Well, I mean, it's fairly full. Remember, the first two weeks are real popular with the fall break. I mean, my first two weeks at all my properties here are booked up. It's um, the price. I would pay that. Yeah. I would book here for the but price. That, that is a really low price for that, especially yeah. given the amenities. I'd bring my own pictures to hang on the wall for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, uh, after I caught myself realizing that the calendar wasn't blocked off, um, I was thinking to myself, holy crap, this thing must be priced way too low. There, Guys, any any reason to have December, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas booked in July? For me, that's okay, a big Okay, so they might be blocking it off. For themselves. And, and doing my scarcity method, though, which oh, is. Go ahead, go I'm, ahead, sorry. I'm going to block off Thanksgiving and Christmas, and then right before Thanksgiving, I'm going to unblock Thanksgiving. Oh, look, there's a, there's a Villages of Crystal Beach for a week, and the prices are way higher than they would have been two months ago. So they could be doing that, too. We also don't They could be using it a lot, which is very yeah. possible. They're, they're a short drive. You know, it's a very easy drive with the family, um, a little weekend getaway from Birmingham. Um, but if I, guys, if I were shopping... Dollars, if I were looking, if I were a potential buyer of this property, I have actually looked to purchase in this neighborhood before. And so I've actually gone through this thought process. If I look at this, one of the biggest things that when my new clients are trying enemy method um, and they don't have experience with it yet, one of the biggest traps is getting caught in this trap. I don't think I want to buy in here because this four bed's only getting 2.30 a night. And you can't, you, you can't be, you know, you can't use it that hard press because you don't know anything about why they're charging that their mortgage could be very low. This could, it just, they might not be as good of a manager as you're going to be. So don't fall in the trap of thinking, man, they're only charging two 30 a night. Maybe I don't want this. Don't fall into that trap. The biggest thing that I personally use it for is I, if I look at the numbers for what four beds generally do in this particular area, I'm mainly looking at this property to enemy method it to say, what can I do to make people pick my four bed over this four bed? And then I've done my job. I can charge more. I can, I'm going to be booked more. What can I do to, to be better? And uh, folks, this, this one that's for sale for a million one has much better paint, better floors. Um, so in other words, to me, I can rent this one for a little more, regardless of what they're renting it for, right? I, I feel like just by the looks of it alone, I could probably do a little better with this house versus, um, let me see if it was this house. Uh, the furniture's okay in here, but uh, you know, the pictures kind of stink, um, that kind of thing. Uh, so, you know, in other words, they're probably neck and neck with this one's winning slightly just for general appearance as far as enemy method is concerned. But then you get in here and you look at these prices and it's like, whoa, oh my goodness. So, um, the, this guy, in other words, this enemy right here is at the very bottom of the uh, the, the rent numbers. Anybody have a, a PITI? Uh, it's probably a terrible idea to throw this out there, but just a you know a range between a thousand dollar range on a PITI on a on a one point one million dollar purchase today at yeah, maybe in the sevens. Rate. I just I just did something similar. Maybe in the seven thousand a month range, depending on HOA. Okay, and this does have an HOA. I don't think this HOA is that too terribly expensive. Does anybody know off the top of their head? Five hundred a month. Um, realtors at like seventy six hundred a month. There, there you go. Boom. All right, from Realtor.com, we're looking at seventy six hundred dollars a month. Okay, 
So this person is charging $230 a night. If you book it for 25 nights, which is 80% occupancy, that's $57.50. You're losing money. So something going on here. You know what I mean? Either this one over here is priced too high or these guys got a smoking deal and rehabbed it and they're not charging enough per night. And it's probably a combination of all of that stuff. So, um, it, you know, I don't know that I would spend a whole lot of time on this enemy here, even though it's the exact same house, uh, because we're not getting a real picture of what's going on. For me, personally, I want this calendar to be, you know, like maybe two weeks in August, maybe three weeks in August, um, two weeks in September. And, and I'm happy with that. Anything more than that, I think they're pricing too low, which we have already proved that these folks are doing that. Anything else that you guys want me to move on to another enemy here? Clear the dates and see what the average date. Oh, well, yeah. yeah when, you clear, when you clear the dates, though. Yep. Yeah. This so number? Yeah. Yeah, that number to me is garbage. It goes back to that original number that we were uh, talking about on the pictures. Right. But but you never know. Uh, I, I personally... It's a beautiful month to be at the beach down here, too, by the way. Lest you think it's chilly, it is not. <laughs> In October? Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. We're all sweating in our Halloween costumes down here in November and October. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, if you're comparing these numbers to that purchase on this other one over here, and by the way, she's 230 across the board. Every date I've clicked on is 230. So she's not optimized, or he uh, is not optimizing their pricing. I would look at here, probably another 230, yes, indeed. So several months of 230 a night. Could pretty much rule this one out. Um, and quite frankly, if this is the best we can do, we're going to lose money on this thing. Uh, you know, so that's when you, you might want to move on to the next one. Um, uh, next enemy, at least, maybe not the next uh, property to purchase. Let's check this one out. Is this another that's, uh, this is a bigger one. So, you know, I might, and this is property managed. I think that's real joy. Yeah. Uh, very large. You know, they've got 22,000 reviews, uh, third party property manager. So I think I'm going to rule that one out personally, just for time's sake. If this was me poking around on a purchase, I don't think I'd be too interested in what this one has to say because it's bigger and it has a property manager. Um, right. And remember, to be successful with the enemy method, you have to pick the right properties. Otherwise, your data is just not any good. That's why this is taking so long. It does take a long time. It does. Two or three hours, I think, um, to really kind of hone in. Here's another similar property. It's a... It's like a two-story, but it's the same number of bedrooms. Um, it's probably less square footage, if I had to guess, and it's a less uh, half bath less. Looks like a looks like a husband and wife uh, team here. 197 reviews. They have two properties. So I'd like to point out that these people have been hosting for four years, and they have 197 reviews, and the other people were hosting for three years, and they only had 79 reviews. Mm. Uh, I'd be willing Already to feels these, like a better enemy. These folks are probably short-term shoppers because they have one yeah. in the mountains. Um, and uh, Carrie and David, we love you. Um, so hopefully you are going to make us look good here. Let's let's dive a little deeper. <laughs> <laughs> um, I already saw some reviews, neon lights or something. Neon lights, yeah. 23 reviews on this particular property. So they haven't had this one as long. Uh, um, let's take a look at the pictures here. Just... Uh, Check it out. Pictures are pretty good. Pretty good. No complaints. There's your color. Per, uh, yep. Check. Yep. You got good, good. I'm so happy. Good. It doesn't whales. take much. A couple of red pillows here and there, a piece of art. This is a fantastic job here. Tell me what I'm buying. What am I renting? What, how far do I have to walk to the beach? That's the only thing anybody cares about. Where's the liquor store and where's the beach? <laughs> so, right there, boom, 0.4 miles. I like that sunset shot too. That's nice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So pretty good job on the pictures here. How many pictures? Again, we're not uh, listing advising. I'd say that's a little low, but I, I'll take that all day long. 37. Um, and um, Can't Jerry, wait David, to see please, the calendar. please ditch your uh, name in the description. That's just me, but okay. Let's look at the calendar. Okay. August. Uh, I would assume that we're in the end of July right now. So the rest of their July is full. August use, use a little bit of work here. I'd say September looks pretty good. Uh, October, uh, you know, we might we might need to, to work on this a little bit. Chuck, how are we doing uh, overall calendar health here? 
Oh, that's kind of about normal now. I mean, that middle week in August is the first slow week. Uh, in fact, it is the slow, their slowest days in August. So I'm not surprised it's not booked. I'm a little surprised they're not booked for Labor Day. Me too. Well, should uh, we just figure out why? Yeah. Looks like three day minimums. That's okay for that time of year. Ah, uh, man, that price to me looks fairly reasonable for Labor I did, Day. It, I, I'd be all over that. Um, looks like they're running some sort of a discount on those nights. Um, but uh, I think these I think these Labor Day dates are priced right. Yeah, it's about 18 percent. Roughly, and I uh, I wouldn't change those. And again, we're not. Uh, I think Carrie and David are pretty good enemy. We yeah. guess. Yep. So let's run some quick numbers here. Let's see. We got these August dates. 396. Let me write that jot that down. And then you got uh, some random September dates that are not a holiday. 337. I, I think I think Carrie and David are doing a great job. Yep. Um, right I'd here. like to see the September dates slightly lower than the August dates. <clears throat> Which normally it's the other way around. Let's point that out. In the rest of the year, you want the further out month to be lower. I mean, higher than the, the closer in month, but there are two exceptions to that rule. Well, there's January and February, which we're not here to talk about those right now, but there's May and September. May should be a little lower than the month before it, depending on, you know, it's, it's, it's all relative to where we are on the actual live calendar. Uh, but in this case, I like, my point is here, I like that he's got his September slightly lower than his August. I think that's a good move. And they've got some September bookings, so. September is very difficult. Everybody's back in school. 472 in October. Let's jot that number down. So he's kind of flying in the mid threes to lower fours for just some random dates. Again, we don't have any idea what he's renting for in July, which is going to be much higher than any of these dates. But, you know, as we cruise through this, we are kind of uh, this. I'm yellow padding. I'm just yellow padding right down what I'm thinking here. Um, and, and if anybody was zoomed in on that, I do have on this top of this page, it says China Grove, Doobie, Doobie Brothers. So don't know, don't ask me why. It just was on there. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, does he sleep. have July open for next year? A good question. Fantastic question, January. Okay. I'm glad you asked that. And I like to point this out. He's blocked starting middle of January. And I think that's a mistake. Tim, talk to me about the availability on this thing. Future yeah. So we recently had a meeting with Airbnb. Uh, they came and kind of talked about uh, just ways to optimize our calendars and stuff. And they told uh, me in a meeting that one of the big things they look at is availability in the way that you land in the algorithm. And uh, they wouldn't give me an exact, like, what's the ideal availability, but they heavily hinted that it needs to be a minimum of 12 months. So, uh, you know, we've made changes to our program to stay open for 12 months. And, uh, you know, you can make decisions on how you want to do that. We you know, we use Price Labs and we use the far out pricing feature. So uh, we we pick nine months, and you can basically in Price Labs you can set a customization up to where far out pricing you can put an adder onto it. So uh, having the calendar open is a good thing, uh, but you can add some price to it if you don't want to book out that far. And uh, we do the same thing for holidays and stuff. And shockingly, we did it, and we actually got we got some like huge holiday bookings already, uh, which surprised me because. Uh, we used to do a little bit more of the way January was talking about, and we just made them available with high prices and they booked. So uh, we got a couple of Christmases and a Thanksgiving already. So Beautiful. Yes, I agree. Uh, the further in advance, uh, the better in most cases, not all cases. Um, okay. While you were talking, I jotted down some random prices on this, uh, this calendar for Carrie and David. Who Carrie and David, I don't know if you're ever going to see this, probably not, uh, but you're, you're doing a good job. Okay, um, I, I jotted down rent, uh, five random nightly rates and I added them up and I uh, found the average, which was $400.20. So, and these are just random fall dates, has nothing to do with the summertime. So, um, I mean, me personally, I'm gonna go crazy and multiply that by 80% occupancy. I don't know if Chuck or anybody else, number, number folks have kind of a way that they would do that. But that would put Carrie and David on an average somewhere around 10 grand a month. Uh, again, these are really random numbers. I just jotted down, you know, random nights. Uh, I jotted down a January night at $268. I did put a, a Thanksgiving night at $600. Uh, 
I had a random 400 and a random 337 and a random 396. I feel like that's a fairly good representation of what he has available. Um, and if you take that times 80%, 25 nights at $400. Did I, did I do my math right? I think I did. Um, $10,000. So if my PITI on this thing was 7,000 something, uh, and my my uh, just a random enemy method yellow pad is telling me somewhere around ten grand. I think I found somebody that's really good at their job that I can dig deeper on and have some pretty good confidence that this this property here, this Kona Way, uh, you know, it might not be a, a dud. I mean, to get this, let me put it this way, folks. To get this close to something that is in within the realm of possibly making some money randomly. Uh, I mean, I literally just was scrolling through my, while my kids were screaming, uh, trying to get to bed last night. Let me pick a couple of houses. This was one of them. Um, and uh, to to find one that, you know, may or may not work is, is, is huge. You know, deals don't just fall out of the sky. So in other words, I would dig a little deeper on this house. Um, and I think that uh, it, it might be worthy of, uh, uh, you know, uh, getting closer to, to calling your agent on that kind of thing. Uh, anybody else have any final thoughts? I am going to go ahead and pull up something in a different market. While you're looking for that, I'll just throw out that at this point for me as an investor in the enemy method, when I find one like the last listing that we just found, I immediately decide that they are a fantastic enemy. Um, and I start looking for things that I can do to the, prop the property that I'm thinking about buying that would make you choose me over that one, which is likely on the same street or just around the corner. So really digging in, not just saying like, okay, using it to that point and stopping where you're like, okay, this should make what I'm thinking that I'd like for it to make. Dig further, figure out how to make yourself better, figure out how to make yourself the best option in that area. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, you want to win at this. <laughs> you, yeah. want to, you want to be the one uh, that everybody, you want to be the one getting enemied. Well, you want to provide the best experience. And if that's the way that you're approaching being a host, you're going to win. If you're trying to provide the best experience for your guest, um, th that's where, you know, you're going to, you found this good enemy. Cool. I feel like it will do the numbers I want. Now, let me look at everyone surrounding me to pull out what little things each person's doing well, see if I can adopt that or do better than that. So, so go bigger at this point and look at other enemies for that purpose and not for pricing. So I'm not going to look at anyone else for pricing. I'm going to look at everyone else around me now for what can I do to make mine the best option for the person coming? Sometimes that takes some courage and confidence because sometimes you got to go out there and be different, you know, and sometimes you got to be not willing to be just like the every house on the street. You know, you got to go out there and do something bold. And, yeah. uh, you know, I know Natalie's done that. I know Jan's got some stuff that's pretty awesome the way that she's got decorated, you know, so you got to get out there and do it. You can't decorate it like you decorate your house. I've learned that the hard way, especially at the beach. I don't love color. Um, I'm very neutral. And at the beach, you know, I've done colorful murals. Jan's done even better, amazing colorful murals. But at the beach, it's got to feel like an experience. So I did a post on this. Um, I'm trying to figure out, remember which of our short term groups I did it on, but I took two properties side by side, one of which is for sale at the moment. And I took both of their Airbnb listings. And I said, let's compare. Here is a property that they're selling because I'm, you can tell they're not doing very well on the on their rentals. And here's another property that's killing it. And here's the difference between same floor plan, same community, same everything, except their furnishings, their paint, their, you know, one of them's doing what we what we teach everybody to do. And the other one's just phoning it in. So even down to the description of the property, uh, you know, it's one of them said, climb the stairs to the master bedroom. And I thought, oh, I already don't want to rent this. <laughs> climb the stairs. Like that, uh, that turned me off. But yeah, every little thing helps. Every little thing makes a difference. All right. So I went to realtor.com and I picked the first thing that came up. I searched, I think I searched for two bedrooms. Uh, and this, this thing was just on the main screen there on realtor.com. Uh, we are, uh, uh, I, dare I say experts in this area, Avery, uh, what do you see when you look at this thing? And first thing I say is this, the roof. well, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. 
presented by the Maloney team. Yeah, Matt Maloney. Yep, we love him. Big Good friend of ours. Um, so first thing I see here is the price. I like the price. Price is coming down a little bit on two bedrooms, but that roof is really, really bothering me. Um, go ahead, though. Yeah, we still jot that down. I would jot that down. It needs a roof. Uh, yep. And and it might not. Uh, it probably. Tim, does this need a roof? I would say it's 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 getting it's there. metal. It might just, just need. There. You, you might be able to power wash it and buy some time. You know, to make it look a little nicer. But uh, you have to see it in person to be sure. It, it looks like it's got grass growing off it. Yeah, and this is in Hidden Mountain, which is a, a great location, um, right between Pigeon Forge and Wears Valley. Um, we've almost bought stuff in Hidden Mountain a couple times. Um, lots of drywall, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, uh, but I would maybe do a few things to make that look a little better with all that blonde wood um, and drywall. Uh, I do like the tongue and groove up to you. Luke, you've got to stop doing that with the cursor. It's making me sick. <laughs> stop. Uh, so um, I, drywall bothers me, but it, I do like the uh, tongue and groove up to the chair rail. Uh, looks like this is going to be one of your classic, like kind of grandma cabins that hasn't, hasn't had a refresh in a little while, which is okay. Nothing wrong with that. That means there is room to get it to where you want it to be, uh, which is great because I think that the price as it is, is pretty decent, but you might have a little room to, to get it a little lower there. Uh, Hidden Mountain West. Yes. Uh, I can't, I think it is Hidden Mountain West, whichever one does not, there's Hidden Mountain East, which I think does require to use their property management company. Yeah. So we don't want yeah. that. And West, you can do what you want, which yeah, I, this, this is, is the one you can do what you want. Yeah. This is the good one. Need some oh. kitchen updates for sure. Yeah. To me, this is a, it's a good bones, you know, situation, but it needs, it needs a, an overhaul, you know? So, and a lot of it's, I'll say cosmetic, but you know, I'd be doing countertops and, and uh, you know, these bedrooms, I'd be looking at some minimum, some kind of accent wall, you know, maybe putting up some tongue groove or even just a color something. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> I had one of those in my motor home. That's the spaceship. <laughs> uh, we've got a deck issue here. I would, I, again, I'm just looking at one random picture. It's pretty safe bet you're going to need to replace most of these deck boards, if not all, um, because you've got no stain. The stain's all worn off, and when that happens, they're going to get worn out. See, look at here. Yeah, that looks junky. I think you're going to need maybe not a new deck, but new decking. Mm -hmm. um, same thing here with this uh, picnic table. Let's just get rid of that and do poly. Beautiful. Got a um, nice picture of the, yeah, glamorous crawl space here. That's awesome. This is a, Long, and we're not absolutely. joking. If you've never seen a crawl space, my friend, <laughs> uh, we are not joking tim and i i'm i'm very impressed with this cross go space. down one more luke yeah this is a nice crawl space i think there's it, a yeah that's that's nice well, they could have leveled the water heater but uh you know it might just be a crooked dehumidifier look at that <laughs> wow i think it's been encapsulated it has it there, was a, there was a need for this at some point there was an issue i would imagine and they had to go through this to uh get it to you know, where it needed to be, I would guess. There was probably a moisture issue of some sort. Oh, yeah. They don't just encapsulate crawl spaces in the Smokies because it's the right thing to do. No, they don't do that. <laughs> this was an expensive job. I, I'm going to throw nine grand out there is what my dollar figure would have been on this crawl space. Uh, is that about right, anybody? Uh, Maybe more. For a 45-year-old property, that lumber looks pretty new. Yeah, that's that's... Interesting you say that because we're sitting here picking on this crawl space, but at the same time, the damn joists and everything look brand new. So now they do have some additional, these probably wouldn't have been there to begin with, or there would have been some concrete cinder blocks instead or something. They wouldn't have been there in 1988. No. These piers here, they would have been. They, they certainly would have been nice. They probably would have been cinder block. I'm 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 in love with the crawl space. So good job there for the <laughs> seller did the right thing. It was probably a big pain in the rear end when they had to go through that for whatever reason, but it looks great now. Um, you know, you got some deck issues um, as far as deck boards and it's going to need a stain overall for sure. So we've got that down for what are we getting on a stain for this thing these days? Like seven grand, six um, to eight, depending on the size. Yeah. 
six to eight. Again, you can't really find this stuff by enemy methoding. We know this stuff because we've all been through it a million times. Um, because we've enemy methoded a lot. <laughs> that's true too. We started with the enemy method. Um, so the location on this thing is great. Um, the micro location, as far as where the neighbors are in the in the view, I, I would say that is you know it's a little better than average. Um, the overall location, as uh, as compared to to town, is is in my opinion is ideal. This is this is exactly where I would like to be when I'm out here in this area. Um, uh, we got a septic tank here. It did have a propane fireplace. Now we're getting in the nitty gritty here. Um, and again, for me, too much drywall, but that's so. I like Luke, that. Fix. When we were going through the pictures, are there two closed door bedrooms, or is one of them a loft situation? And is there a game? area because I, I think the pool table's in a common area because when we enemy method that's what we want to keep in mind is that it's as apples to apples because all two bedrooms are not created equal I have a 2,000 square foot two bedroom that has everything you could think versus a smaller two bedroom that just has two bedrooms and no like mine has a theater room game room you know whatever I think I think and we might need to read the description honestly uh, I think we've got two real bedrooms and the pool table is off the kitchen living room. Okay. So that would be, you know, I don't know that I would market that as a game room, but yeah, maybe no. kind of, I think it was probably, or is there also, there's also a kitchen table underneath the stairs. Yeah. Which is a little awkward. Um, I don't know if I'd market it as a game room, but I would definitely market the games. Needs new tops. You know, stuff like that. All right, let's pull up our enemies and see what we got doing here. Uh, in, uh, Chuck, does Realtor.com have a, a PITI on this thing? Uh, I like that. Uh, they did. About uh, 29, almost 3,000. About 3,000. And there will be no HOA on this uh, property. And if it is, it's extremely small. Uh, so 3,000 for my PITI, according to Realtor.com. And let's see how quickly we can find this thing on the map. Uh, uh, and maybe if I could spell it right, but it did it for me. That's fine. <laughs> Sever, you Severville. I was just, Severville. Yeah. I always <laughs> just see it's yeah. S Severville. Um, flexible and search. That's what I do. There's a million different things. That's just to point that out real quick. Uh, you got, the, I just put in the town I'm going to and I skip everything else. Okay. And then I try and find it on the map, which in some cases, like I mentioned earlier, can be very difficult. But um, I've been to this area a million times. I bet you I can find it, find the area pretty easily. We're down. Let's see. Is it, I think it's north of Walden's Creek. It is, it is. right? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Right. Is it off Easy Street? No. Go Walden's Creek yeah. to uh, Great, uh, Goose Gap and then Bluff Mountain. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> or, or Walt Price Road. Walt Price Road, right up in here. If you go all the way down, yeah. And there here's the two lakes. There we go. This is Hidden Mountain uh, West. It's got those two little, I don't know if I call them a lake, but that's what, you know, kind of. Um, there should be, uh, all right, let me point something out here. These three here did, did not exist until I moved my, my cursor. And the more you move it, the more things will change, right? So a lot of times you're like, well, I can't find any enemies. And then you just give up. If you zoom in, you'll see more. If you zoom out, it, it changes with every little move you make, right? So uh, what's, what's the street, street so name? So it's, it's not quite in Hidden Mountain. It's actually like just south of it a little. If you go uh, Bluff Road at like where Smoky Cove neighborhood is, it's off there's to the right from Smoky there's, Cove neighborhood. There's the road right there. Okay. It's on this road somewhere. See, and if it was me, I would AB, I would AB this next to Google Maps, pull up Google Maps, because Google Maps will give you the house number on, on the satellite, right? So then I can zoom in and find out exactly which house this is. Um, maybe even find the listing for this, because this house is probably for rent. That's another thing to consider here, folks. The house you're looking to buy is probably on Verbo. It's probably on Airbnb. It's been all, all Airbnb today, and we do apologize for that. We are huge Verbo. I'm a huge Verbo fan. I know Chuck's a big Verbo fan. Um, it just, I hate to say it, but Airbnb's website is a little easier to use, you know, so. Um, and it is on Verbo. You found it on Verbo? Yeah. 
Oh, throw it in the chat there, if you don't mind. I'll pull, I'll pull up this house. That's a very helpful thing there. You want to knock that down to two bedrooms and filter there, Luke? What was it on? I don't know. I thought I saw some that were more, but. That's a good idea. Let's pull up this listing here and see what we're doing. See what's doing. Oh, look at how cute the red roof is. <laughs> Uh, 4.4 stars is pretty horrible. Uh, 87 reviews. Uh, let's see. Who's managing this thing? Uh, I just Al got Alpine Retreat is the name. That's the cabin name. That's the cabin name? Yep. Okay. That's how I found it. I got you. Got it. Cool. All right. Um, now, this calendar is not, not terrible. Why didn't they use these pictures for the listing to actually sell the house? Well, maybe you call Matt about that. <laughs> <laughs> these pictures are much better than the realtor.com. Weird. Well, some of them are actually pretty close, but. Woof. I think I've been in this. I've been in this cabin before. It's coming back to me now with the skis and the red stuff. Got a little barn style roof. Uh, I, I, this is a mistake. I know, I know we're not here to enemy to uh, listing advice. Snow pictures in the Smokies for me is a, a mistake. You you're you're talking about a two percent chance, one maybe like a a point five percent chance that your guest is going to see snow. Right? I mean, it's just not going to happen. I don't like to put stuff in the pictures that I can't deliver. So snow pictures for me is misleading because somebody from coming off from Ohio is like, oh, sweet, we're going to the mountains. Maybe we'll see some snow, you know. Uh, but, guys, I hate to tell you, it does not snow in the south, all right? <laughs> this guy from the, from the Midwest, uh, you know, it just does. People think mountains and they think snow, but it doesn't snow in the south. Look at the description. Like, it says snow and ski sports, like as if maybe insinuating there, like. <laughs> no, that, 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 no, bad move. <laughs> Bad management. Um, calendar's not terrible. I almost don't. I I gotta I gotta be honest with you. I don't really care at all what this calendar says because these guys are just not doing a good job. 182 a night. I'll be honest. That's probably a pretty good number on a two bedroom. And uh, what did I pick? August. Chuck, is that a good number for a, a smaller property? I, I think that's about average. Yeah, and they're running the same rates in October as well. I think it's a little low for October. But it's good for August. So. Oh, October's the same as August? Yeah, that's a mistake. That's why their October's full. That's why it's yeah. So some room for improvement here. You know, obviously the, the management on this thing right now is what we see across the board pretty commonly, Avery, uh, to talk about this. Uh, this this is not uncommon here, This this what they have as far as management. Uh, you mean just kind of the, the old school type of management? Yeah, and they're just, you know, yeah. they're pricing and things. Yeah, um, it can be pretty normal. It's it's less common now in the Smokies because there's a lot more sophisticated investors that have moved in and, and bought here and are doing things well. But you still can find properties like this that are underperforming because the management is just kind of like, meh, uh, here's our summer price. Here's our winter price. That's the end of it. Uh, we're going to put slap some skis on everything, even though you can't ski here and, and do mountain stuff. So um not as common as it used to be, but still pretty prevalent. Yes. And for new people, if you're, if you find the cabin that you're thinking about buying, like we just did, rental history and current performance is not an indicator of what you can make this do. That's what I was looking for. You're exactly yes, 100%, 100%. right. 100%. Yeah. And, and why in the world is November 12th? priced for the same amount as October. That is just terrible management. Um, no, that is a three-day weekend. It's, yeah, veteran, yeah. Oh, never mind. Well, it should be higher. It should be pretty, pretty high. Two fifteen in November. Okay, let's find uh, an enemy on this thing, see if somebody's doing any better than they are. Um, okay, we're, well, uh, Let's see, six beds. 
three bedroom, a little big. I might come back to that one. Uh, you're right, uh, Tim. Thank you for that uh, observation. There, we need to go to two. Does it have two bedrooms? Two uh, two bathrooms. The uh, the uh, subject I property. I believe it did. Two. Yes. Uh, and an average two bedroom square footage of uh, twelve fifty. All right. Where was I? Which browser was I on here? Uh, this one. All right. So we need to go to two bathrooms, and I'll keep the beds at any, and see what we narrow it down to here. And again. The more you move it around, the more numbers you will see. Okay, so let's take a look. Uh, what do we have here? That's that same house, but there's a three bedroom. Sometimes it'll come up with anything more than what you're looking for, which is why that three bedroom popped up. Two, two, here we go. This is an evolved property. Does anybody have anything to comment on that? I think I'll try and stay out of that, but uh, Chuck or no, nah, we'll stay out of that. It's a, it's a professional property manager. Property managers are, these properties are never a good enemy, usually uh, for pricing um, and usually not for amenities and how it, I can look at it and go, well, it's going to be very easy for me to do better than them, but that's about it. You can see the reviews are horrible and that's kind of goes hand in hand with that too. Yep. So yeah. I, I uh, this is very, very simple. So that's true. Yeah, Mark, Chuck, do you want to explain that really quick? Yeah, they don't actually manage the properties. What they do is they take care of your online listings and uh, get the bookings, but that's it. They don't handle maintenance. They don't handle cleaning. They don't handle anything at the property. They they do have partners, but in Smokies, it seems to be a, a fairly fast rotation of people through there. Um, I used them when I started. And, uh, you know, we continue to hear the same things from owners there that, that go that route. Um, yeah, they're like they a hybrid, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they just handle the online marketing side, which since they don't vet anybody, <laughs> um, I just don't understand why that's so difficult. Yeah. Well, well let's, let's keep it positive. Let's try to. <laughs> yeah. 5.0 here on Shanna. Uh, Shauna. Shauna's got 5.0, 31 reviews. Um, that's worth looking a little deeper here. Yeah. Um, yeah. We got a real log cabin. This was built by Joe Dodgen. Uh, he's still alive. I have one of his properties. Uh, deck boards, uh, again, need to be stained, but don't look like they need to be replaced. You've got a brand new hot tub. So far, Sean is doing a little better job than anything. More modern. Seen. The dining room table and stuff is way more modern looking. You know, I mean, they, they, all that stuff looks way better. And that's really cool. the little kind of stuff you can do is like touch up all that stuff, you know? Really cool microwave. We do have a downside with these appliances here. They're garbage, but that's okay. I get it. Um, she's probably saving up for those, and that's nothing wrong with that. Um, she's got real log cabin with, uh, they call this chinking here, which is basically what that is, is painted styrofoam for lack of a better way to put it. Um, and a uh, nice couch, nice furniture, cool loft with the, uh, uh, the beds newer. I mean, everything just looks newer in this one. You know, it doesn't look like it's 40 years old. It's got the a point. nice shower, updated shower for the Smokies. Yep. Better enemy 30 pictures, which is kind of right where I'd like to be for a two bed. So Shauna is doing a much better job here. Let's see if she's got other properties. Just, just for curiosity's sake, she's got two cabins. All right, so um, on to something here. You get, you get the idea here, guys. We, uh, uh, we, we found an enemy that's, uh, you know, we can get a little bit more excited that this person is probably doing a pretty good job. They've probably been in the Listing Advice Facebook group. And this can kind of show you what you may need to do if you're, you know, there's not that you shouldn't buy that other property, but you, this is what you got to compete with, you know? So you're going to have to do some Back. upgrades to, to get it like this, which is fine. You know, I mean, if you get the right property at the right price, you can afford to do some updating. Uh, but, you know, you don't want to just like assume that you're going to do the same numbers as this property would, you know, again, if you were renting them, which one are you going to rent? You know, this one or that one? Um, I'm Bravo. Taking Extremely well said. Very well said. I and also, go ahead. Well, I was going to say the people who are struggling with bookings right now, um, a lot of the people who are struggling, not all of them, but a huge chunk of people have been doing this since like 1920. And um, the days of being able to buy what we're looking at as a listing, not do anything to it and throw it out as a rental and get booked, those days are gone. Yeah, you have to you have to do like what Sean is doing and do some cosmetic updating at minimum 
you don't have to do these big remodels, but you got to make it look like a place that people want to go because there's better competition now. Back then, the pool of people, uh, the pool of options on Airbnb were, or any of the platforms was so small because there were so few self-managers. You got to step your game up a little bit now. There's a lot of us. And the new kids coming in, they're kind of winning because they get it. Like, I don't know how long Sean has been doing it, but like the new, my newer clients are blowing some old numbers away currently in 23 uh, because they came in a little bit more um, aggressive than when we started buying in 19 or 20 or something like that. And we could buy it, leave it, rent it, and it would just fill up because there weren't that many options. Bravo. Well said. Once again, you guys are rock stars. You're really making me uh, be proud to be in this room. Uh, a couple of notes there on Natalie's uh, comments. Uh, one note on Natalie's comments and then one note on the house. I'm reminding myself. Um, you could. You literally could throw. If you were in the right market in the right neighborhood, you could throw the son of a gun on Airbnb and Verbo and crush it. Uh, that being said, I, again, I own the longest running Airbnb in the Smokies and I have always since day one, even though my my enemies and my neighbors were pretty pathetic, have done everything within my power to make my houses better. Always since day one, for real. Um, I was always putting in the new knife block, putting in the new uh, pots and pans, uh, upgrading, you know, new toilets, all the little stuff along the way. Uh, when, so, when a guest complained that the toilet was this and that, uh, the cleaner says, hey, your toilet's not working. Everybody on the planet goes out there and it gets a rebuild kit. I get a new toilet. Because quite frankly, you're only looking at a few hundred dollars difference. And a new toilet is fantastic. <laughs> okay? I love it. You know, it's a terrible example. I hate to talk about they this call, stuff. They call it a throne for a reason. Right in front of my wife, I'm talking about this. But anyway, uh, uh, you know, I don't know how I could pick that of all the things in the house, but it went that way. Okay? So um, I will say that uh, yes, Natalie's hundred percent right. But I, who take pride, take pride in being the best in the damn business. All right. And, and I have since day one, always made improvements on every aspect of all of my properties. Now, are they perfect? You go walk into them now. Are they perfect? You're going to see dust bunnies. Occasionally you're going to see this, you're going to see that, but I'm going to tell you right now, they are infinitely better than the day I bought them. And that's, what's most important. Okay. One more note on this property before we look at the calendar, which I'm dying to see, because <clears throat> I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a pretty damn good looking calendar. Um, I don't like the TV. I don't like this stupid shelf. I'm getting rid of this shelf and I'm putting in an 83 inch TV up here. Big monster TV that's almost touching the ceiling up here. Now I'd rather, rather have it a little lower, obviously for neck purposes. But in the case of this uh, stack stone fireplace, you pretty much have to go over it. Plus you don't wanna be that close for heat purposes anyway. Uh, and this looks to be a, a wood burning stove. So that's going to get blazing hot as opposed to maybe a, an electric fireplace. But uh, so I, I, I'm going to ditch this and put a massive uh, TV up here. That's just one little nitpick. All right, let's get into the calendar here at our, uh, what do we say? 3000 on the PITI here on this one. Um, according to realtor.com, of course. So uh, let's see the calendar, uh, July, August. Uh, we got nothing in September. So that is a little surprising. We've got a half of an October. So this tells me they're not really crushing the pricing. I would rather see a little, well, I like this October. This October, I'm okay with this October. I would rather see more September than October personally right now. Because October is, is a walk in the park. It's, it's kind of a, a, a softball. Um, and so worst case with October, you keep it high and then later on you can lower the price as it gets a little closer if you need to because yeah, you know, you don't really have to worry about October. We call it leaf changing season in the in most mountain markets. It's going to be a leaf changing season, and everybody wants to see it because it's just beautiful. So I would rather see two weeks here in September and one week in October. That's just me. Let's take a look at some numbers. <clears throat> if anybody wants to banter, I'll 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 jot down some random numbers here. We got a one fifty eight in September. Um, banter, what do you think of that? Banter, <laughs> banter, banter. What do you think of that? Uh, Tim, Chuck, uh, Avery, why? Uh, to me, though, that price should be booking in September. Yeah, that so go should ahead. be booking. It hmm. Yeah, it should. <clears throat> All right. Uh, keep keep yakking it up, and I'll write down some random numbers here. Let's see. I got a 196 for That's also a little low, in my opinion. I wish I knew what she was booked at for those nights in October. Maybe let's look at... Um... 
Okay. Oh, it's too low. But maybe, not, I mean, maybe it's a smaller two bed. Well, also, October is lower than Labor Day. That's a little weird. I mean, higher. Sorry. October is higher than Labor Day. I, I think I disagree with that. Yeah. I mean, I think things are still coming in, you know, a little more last minute. There you go. That's better. Yeah. The, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised by September, but a two bedroom is going to book later than, you know, a bigger one generally. So like yeah. Avery said, you know, the things are coming in later and I'll be honest of my September calendar. I'm about 50% September right now across six, but my lightest ones are my two bedroom and, uh, and my two bedrooms, I'm still filling in July right now. And it's, but it's filling in, you know, it's, I'm at close to full now, but, uh, mm. uh I see another mistake here. Again, you're talking about what's the holiday in the early November? Uh, what is it, Veterans? Veterans Day. Which is the 11th. Yeah. The weekend of the 11th. What do we got here? Uh, see, to me, this is... Hold on, let me see what we got here. See, 237, these are, these are ra rather throwaway dates for me. This is a Sunday through Wednesday in the middle of November between two major holidays. To me, these are junk dates. And she's got them higher than... Labor Day in October. So I think we're we're not quite optimized as much as we could be here, Shauna. Uh, that being said, I do think she's a fantastic enemy. She's doing a great job on her property. Um, she's also pet friendly. That's, you know, I don't know if I care about that as far as numbers, but uh, just caught my eye. Let's see what we got here for Christmas. Um, 311, 346. I just picked 10 random nights. I would bet her closer to Christmas is even higher. No. She already had a sale, a markdown on her dates for Christmas. I don't know that it's, I don't know that I would have a sale on those yet. Those are going to book. And by the way, I picked January instead of December there for a second. Sorry about that. 270 that, or 370. I'd say that that's probably right where I would be for Christmas right now on this thing, right in that neighborhood, right in that uh, lumber yard, if you will. <laughs> um, so she's close. I think she's got a little work to do on her pricing. Let's, how long has she been doing this? 30, 31 reviews. So she's, you know, she's let, she's about a half a year. Uh, and she's close. She's real close. So I, 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 I jotted down one, two, three, four, five, six. If anybody wants to yak it up real quick, I'll, I'll uh, add up these numbers, divide them, uh, get the average, and then we'll see what this we're place have at. A, does this place have a game room? I don't remember. I don't think we had any games, did we? Yeah, I don't think so. And that, and that is, you know, back to what Natalie was talking about. Not every two bedroom is the same as every other two bedroom. Uh, my two bedroom does have a, a, a dedicated game room. Um, so it's a little bit bigger than this. Tell me so. what game I could fit in this house. I'd have to, I'd have to see a little better, but at this point, um, you know, pretty much most people have figured out that, that even if you're in a cramped space and don't have a lot of, you know, extra room, there's a lot of wall mounted games on Amazon, connect yeah. Four, tic-tac-toe, things like that. So, I mean, things that aren't darts, <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> no projectiles. Yeah. Uh, but also uh, I, I, that I completely agree with. And also there's almost always room in something this size to sneak in uh, an, an arcade, an, ups, an upright arcade game. So, yeah. yeah that, or a coffee table style or a side table style. Cocktail, cocktail. Yeah. Cocktail so, uh, Diane, Diane over at, uh, this is how well we know our markets folks here at the short term shop. Diane at arcade headquarters. She has a, she calls it a slim arcade and it's uh, it only comes out from the wall about two feet. Uh, not even, I think it's 18 inches and it's a full on real deal. You know, like when you're a kid, arcade game machine with 60 games and it's very durable, um, that would fit in here somewhere. And if not, again, what Chuck was saying, that cocktail game would fit right there. Well, and I've also, also started buying, um, nowhere local has them. I have to order them, but wall mounted arcade games. Um, and they only stick out like maybe no more than like 10 inches from the wall. They're very, very slim and they mount to the wall. You can put them anywhere as long as you have a plug. Uh, one other thing that caught my eye, her, her Keurig is very cute. I like that. Uh, it's like a, it's like a uh, flat gray. That's pretty cool. I've never seen one of those. Um, anyway, all right. I did some math here. I came up with $246 on six random nights divided by each other. Uh, for an average of two hundred and forty-six dollars and sixty-six cents, 
I do feel based on the fact that I have two properties that are very similar to this. So that's a pretty damn good number for an average price per night for an, a, a year period on this thing. Might be a little, little high if you're trying to get that real super high occupancy, which is what I like. I like to be close to 85, 90% occupied if possible on a property this size. Um, so let's, let's take that number. Um, 246, the, again, random nights from her calendar, straight from her calendar. Let's times that by 80% occupied. That'd be 6150. 6150 without cleaning fees, without taxes, no fees, just nightly rate. And your PITI was three grand. Of course, you got to take your expenses out of that. I think we're onto something here. I think the biggest downside in this scenario is that this property probably does need some work. Yeah. So that's 73 grand a year, uh, basically what you just said there, Luke, if you took a times 12. And again, you know, that that makes other property look really attractive if you're just looking at numbers. But that's why we end me method, because you got to look at what, you know, what it is, you know, because you're not going to get that out of this other one. You know, it, it, not, not the way it is. You could make it do that for sure. So matter of fact, yeah. this one actually has two real bedrooms and a pool table and the subject property, the, the enemy, Shauna, she has uh, a loft. So it's, you know. All right, now let's talk about that briefly and, and then we'll start to wrap this thing up. I personally would rather have the loft than the two real bedrooms, but I do think at the end of the day, uh, the two real bedrooms is probably a better revenue driver over the period, long period of, uh, and I don't know what you guys' thoughts on are on that. When I go to the mountains, my, my grandfather had a little cabin in the mountains in, in, in Wyoming that had a loft. And to me, that's a damn cabin in the mountains. So I like the loft. But I think over the course of a long period of time, I really do think the real bedroom is probably going to hit you with a little more gross income than, than having it being open. So this is a winner compared to Shauna on the, the real bedrooms. Uh, unless anybody wants to contradict me on that. Do you guys feel the loft is better than the real bedroom or do we not really care? Or Nobody's contradicting me. So we'll I think it's, I, I've seen people with lofts do crazy, crazy good numbers, and and they're but they're rock stars, you know. And I've seen a two bedroom do bad that aren't, you know. So I think it, right. it can. My my two bedroom is kind of a hybrid. It, it is a it has a loft, but their bedroom upstairs has a door, and on the other part of the loft it has the pool table, you know. So it's kind of a, kind of a split, I guess. I'll but. say one thing, just to kind of like add to that, that I tell my clients whenever. Cause it's very hard whenever you're shopping and you like the numbers or like the air DNA of a two bed, but not all two beds are created equal. So one thing I tell them, and it's not necessarily like just the loft discussion, but a lot of times in a loft or even like a lower level, they'll, it'll be a bedroom. Um, but they'll have other things as well, right? Like, you know, maybe games or whatever. So one of the big questions you want to ask for like, how are you going to call it a bedroom on Airbnb um, is when you're standing in it, do you feel like you're in a bedroom that happens to have games or do you feel like you're in a game room that just happens to have a bed? And if it's a game room that feels like it happens to have a bed, I don't generally like to call that a bedroom uh, because I don't, I, my bed count and my person count on Airbnb will draw you in, but I don't want to make you think that you're going to have a closed door bedroom when you're not. So that doesn't necessarily, like I will call a loft a bedroom, even if it doesn't have a door that closes, as long as that's all that loft does for the most part. That's a good point. Cause in, in Florida, we have condos and houses that have bunk rooms that are kind of the same. And that is the only thing that they do. And so, you know, on the property appraiser's website, it's a one bedroom or a two bedroom, but on Airbnb, it's a two bedroom or a three bedroom because it rents like that. Yeah, that's a good right. point. Well, I mean, there's another strategy here too that you can use when you have a door to your bedroom. And that is at a place like this, in a slow season or even last minute, you can list it as a one bedroom. You get a lot of couples looking for places that doesn't occur to them to take a two bedroom because it may be priced the same. Yeah, that's good too. We do this with one of our two bedrooms and it added about another 10% occupancy for us kept us really full in, in January and February. And I only had it listed for 5% less. So that's cool. And all my cleaners do is lock the door. Anybody have any uh, closing words before we wrap it up here with uh, enemy method live? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll give you some, why not? Uh, <laughs> yeah, spend some time on it. Spend some There's time a shocker. on it. Yeah, Luke right. Always has words. Man of, man of too many words. Uh, it's it's time consuming. Get 
get I here's what I do. I get a thousand yellow pads and I sit there and I scribble and I scribble and I scribble and it's fun as hell. It really is, man. I enjoy it. You know, it's all about the deals and the shopping and the and the uh uh the the thrill of the chase, you know. So um can't spend enough time on it. That being said, maybe you can because you don't want to drive yourself nuts and then not, never buy anything. But uh, anybody else have any words before we turn it over to Avery? I think you can kind of cater to yourself a little bit. I'm oh, sorry. I was just saying thank you to everybody for coming. Oh. oh, I think you can cater to yourself a little bit. You know, looking at that last subject property, to me, for to the right person, that's a blank canvas and full of opportunity. Uh, if there's somebody that's creative and like doing that stuff, it can be better than buying one that's turnkey that they don't, or more turnkey and more ready that they that isn't the level that they could take it to because they have that skill set. If you don't have that skill set, you might be better off buying a more expensive property that's further along than that one, you know, because you don't have the skills and time and money or whatever to put into that subject property. So it kind of, there isn't like a one answer fits all, you know, uh, and it doesn't make one property wrong or one property right. It just kind of goes back to what works for you and, uh, and how do you apply your value add to the property? So. Yeah. And so to Tim's point, that, that is a hundred percent. And so the way that I've always kind of explained it to my clients is when you're looking at a two bed that cost 500 versus a two bed that costs 600, the, the number one thing I tell them to do for Tim's point is to take a look at what capital, like what are you having to spend to purchase that 500 and how much do you think you're going to have to put into it to make it something you would want to rent? And I tell my clients that. You got to make it something you would want to stay in. How much cash is that going to take on top of your down payment and closing costs? Get that number, right? So if it's, you know, if it, let, let me just make something up and say it's going to cost you 75 grand all in to get that property going. You know, what can you buy where your down payment and closing costs on a more ready property for 75 grand. So it's a balance. There's no right or wrong. It's personal preference. Do you want to put the work in and make it something really cool? And you're, and if it balances out and you can do about the same, then that's, you know, it's, it's totally up to you. Well, listen, I had a great time. I'm super grateful to be here. Uh, join me uh, every Monday at uh, Man uh, Management Monday if you uh, buy a house with a shop. But uh, Avery, do you want to give us some closing words? Yeah, thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, Enemy Method is more important than ever. Resources out there, uh, which is great. Awesome. The more data you can get, the better. But there is just so much that you can't see from the data when it, turn, when it comes to analyzing properties. Also, we're starting to see more properties at the market, so more opportunities for buyers. And uh, if you want to work with us, email us at agents at the shop.com. Thanks, guys.